himself to God. So you're not going to have any psychologists there uh, trying to excuse why you did and why you rebelled against God, why that you don't go to church, why that you tell a lie, why that you take a drug, why that you drink alcohol, all of these things that you do, and you're just having a hard time uh, uh, coping with them. Maybe if you clean your life up and trust Jesus Christ as your Savior, therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God. But this is found in Romans chapter 14, verses 11 and 12, where every one of us shall give an account of himself to the Lord. An individual can uh, possess no greater inner peace than being assured by God's word that their sins are forgiven and paid for by Jesus Christ on the cross. The realization that I'm now a child of God, in John chapter 1, verse 12, as many as received him, that's Christ, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, and that God is my heavenly Father. It comes from personally receiving Jesus Christ as my Savior. But as many as received him, as we said, to them gave he the power, that is the right, (coughs) excuse me, to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. The conflict rages between everlasting peace which only God can give, and the false temporary peace offered through humanistic, secular psychiatry and its philosophy. In USA Today, October the 8th, 1993, Michael Yapka, a San Diego psychologist and hypnosis, states concerning RMS, that is, repressed memory syndrome, that many therapists don't know that memory is so responsive to suggestion. And that's exactly what some of these psychologists do. The Atlanta, Atlanta Journal and Constitution, December the 11th, 1994, states that Mark Pettigrast, author of Victims of Memory, states that, and here's his quote, he and thousands of parents like him are the real victims. His book reveals that his daughters and other incest survivors have fallen prey to what skeptics call false memory syndrome. The same paper states that therapists, who believe memories can be lost and retrieved, often say that if you think you were abused, you probably were. But uh, Pettigrast, as well as a significant portion of mental health community, uh, believes traumatic memories are never forgotten. I've got to agree with them 100%. What about you? If you're listening to this broadcast and you look back on your life, aren't the traumatic things, uh, uh, they never go away. He charges that these so-called memories that patients are digging up are, in fact, their imagination encouraged by therapists who believe incest is as common as chicken pox in the American family. So much for the psychiatrists, huh? Remember, the peace that God gives is for this life and extends through all eternity. It is actually a free gift. In Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9, For by grace are we saved through faith, that not of ourselves, it is the gift of God, Not of works, lest any man should boast. The peace that psychotherapy offers is a false and a temporary peace at the price of $150 to $225 an hour for that psychologist to feed you the lies and really screw your mind up. The middle verse of the Bible reflects God's advice to mankind. It's better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in men. In Psalms chapter 118, verse 8. And then we are told also in the Word of God, Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit, after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. In Colossians chapter 2, in verse 8. Now, I look back in my files and uh, under psychiatry and so forth, and I found an article that was printed in the Star Tribune, Minneapolis, Minnesota, on March the 18th, <clears throat> in 2001. And this was a trial, and it's a, a real tragic, tragic case. But anyway, we uh, uh, I'll read you part of it here. Uh, this was just a heartbreaking case. Bill Smoller, a Madison, Wisconsin attorney who represented the family in Eau Claire, Eau Claire County Circuit Court, said Saturday. Smoller has tried other cases involving false memory syndrome, including a 1997 case that ended up with a $2.4 million settlement, and it was featured on 60 Minutes. The syndrome is defined as a psychological condition in which a person believes he or she remembers events that have not occurred. People who dispute the reality of such a syndrome argue that the term can be used to hide past abuse 
and have a chilling effect on therapists. Smoller said that the medical research cited during the trial of the Sawyer's uh, lawsuit demonstrated that the ph- ph- phenomena is real, that were the prosecutors and so forth, or defendants, I guess. And uh, this is brainwashing by unscrupulous therapists, he said. This stuff is bad stuff. And then he goes on, it's very interesting here, uh, he goes on, the name of the girl, I'll just read you in part. In this case, we have a daughter you love who suddenly is accusing you of the worst thing imaginable. By the time she died, she had accused her father, her brother, her brother's friend, her mother, her grandfather, an uncle, an aunt, two cousins, and three pastors. Everybody was accused as molesting her. Molesting her, I'm sorry. Nancy Anitra, then who was Nancy Sawyer, received counseling in 1984 from Lostedit, and a uh, psychiatrist not named in the suit. After a year of treatment, she accused her parents of physically and sexually abusing her as a child. The Sawyers denied the abuse, but their daughter severed all ties with them and changed her name. She continued to receive counseling and in 1987 began being treated by Middlefort. One year later, she sued her parents for civil damages for the claimed abuse the suit was dismissed. Anitra, this is the uh, girl here who uh, had to suit her parents, continued in therapy until she died of cancer in 1995. Her parents uh, learned of her death through a note left in the mailbox. They filed their lawsuit in 1996. It was dismissed, but they appealed the case. Eventually went on to the Wisconsin Supreme Court, which said the parents had a right to seek damages for pain caused by their daughter's accusations. In this decision Friday... A jury found Anitra's claims of childhood sexual abuse were grounded in inaccurate memories implanted by the attorney and reinforced by the other attorney. The jury held that the one attorney was 80% responsible and the other attorney 20%. Then, of course, they couldn't be reached. But let me give you the outcome of this. Nancy Anitra died more than six uh, uh, six years ago. That was from when it was printed here and had been uh, uh, insisting she had been sexually and physically abused by her parents and so forth. On Friday, a jury of Eau Claire, Wisconsin, held that Anitra had had, uh, been abused not by family members, but by two therapists, including one from Medina, who had planted false memories in the mind of the former school teacher. The Sawyer cited as the verdict was read, or cried as the verdict was read, ordering that the therapist, and names him and so forth, were to pay the Sawyers and their daughter an estimate of $5.8 million. The award came after 10 hours of deliberation at the close of a three-week trial. This is what your psychiatrist can do to you. (coughs) Instead of playing around with people who are playing around with your mind, wouldn't it be better to turn to the Lord Jesus Christ? You let people implant things into your mind, and pretty soon you start to believe them. But you'll notice again in John 14:27, may I repeat the verse, Christ said himself, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. If you desire, and let me give this to you, it be a good book for you to get. If you're listening to this broadcast here, you'll really enjoy it. It gives you many, many illustrations of how these psychiatrists have screwed up people, and uh, I'm using that word loosely, and have really fouled up their minds. If you desire a comprehensive study of the deception of psychiatry, let me suggest that you obtain the book, and it's entitled, Only God Can Heal the Wounded Heart, by Dr. Ed Buckley, B-U-L-K-L-E-Y. You can find it in your local Christian bookstore. The Bible and the Lord Jesus Christ, who created life, has the answers to life. A lot of depression comes by rebelling against God, and you have a guilty conscience. And why things don't go right because God chastens his children. If you're a Christian, then you're going to find out that God will chasten you. Whom the Lord loveth, he correcteth every son whom he receiveth. To have a good sound mind and mental health is to trust Jesus Christ as your Savior, and you have the peace of God. You most assuredly do. In fact, he brings this out. There is two pieces that you can have, and that is found, and it's also labeled as rest. In Matthew chapter 11, and verse 28 and 29, the Word of God says this. The verse 28 is salvation, and verse 29 is service. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Christ will do it. How will he give you rest and peace? By assuring you that he died on the cross to pay for your sins. And if you'll put your trust in him and him alone for your salvation, 
And God says, you can have that rest and you can have that peace. And uh, there's nothing like it in the world because the Creator of the world sent His only begotten Son, and whosoever believeth in Him would never perish but have everlasting life. And then in the trials of life that we all face, in verse 29, Take my yoke upon you and learn me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. When we take what the Word of God says and don't rebel against it, <clears throat> you'll find out that you'll have a rest and a peace there. And we find out also Philippians says the same thing. And it tells us over there in chapter 4. It says, first of all, in verse 6, Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. If you're not rebelling against God, you don't need a nervous breakdown. You don't need an antidepressant pill. Because the more of those you take, the more dependent you are upon them. Pretty soon you'll be alone for the rest of your life, and your body craves them and thinks that's the normal way to act because you've injected these pills in there because probably mainly you just plain won't face reality. You won't face what God says to do to have life. It's His will that you have life and have it abundantly. But I see our time's gone. Enough of that. Let me get back to the very basic where it all starts. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. I know if I were to die, I'm absent from the body, present with the Lord. Yes, I'll see my mother, I'll see my father, I'll see many, many of my friends, see uh, hundreds of people we've led to the Lord Jesus Christ. What a thrill it'll be. I'll see the pastor that led me to Christ. Uh, what a thrill it'll be. And you have that peace, and you know that when death comes. And you can know that also. That's a wonderful peace. And then to know that you can obey the Word of God and have the peace of God that passeth all understanding. You don't need a nerve pill. You don't need a antidepressant pill. You need obedience to the Word of God, and God will give you that peace. Well, I see our time's gone. We'll invite you to uh, write to us if you would like to do that. We'd sure love to hear from you. Our, radio, uh, our address is the Heritage Radio Bible Class, Post Office Box 573, Walnut Grove, Minnesota, and our zip code is 56180. We'd like to invite you to our church service Sunday morning. Uh, from 10 to 11, Sunday evening from 6 to 7, and our wonderful youth group every Thursday from 7 to 8.30 or 9. And uh, we hope that you'll consider that. Love to have you come. Well, keep looking up, because the first promise when Jesus left this earth, back to the earth, was, I will come again in like manner as you have seen me go. So we're ever praying, even so come, Lord Jesus.